Hello everyone, this is Jinx, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. So the patrons have spoken and the next weapon to be covered in the meta series is Lance. Now Iceborne is different from base game Monster Hunter world because the meta is not as cut and dry as it previously was. This is especially the case for Lance. There are multiple raw options for you to go with as general use Lances, but also Elemental has its place and so does Status. So this is going to be a three-parter, today we'll be talking about the raw set. Also, real quick disclaimer, as I talked about previously when explaining our philosophy on elitism and toxicity, we are not telling you that you have to run these builds, we're not even telling you that you should run these builds. The point of this series is to make sure that the factual information on what are the best damage sets in Monster Hunter World are out there and available for people to find. Through a combination of math, testing, working with speedrunners, and set optimizers, we figure out what are the highest damage sets to run. If you are not comfortable with using full damage loadouts without quality of life or defensive skills, we encourage you to take these builds and try to work out your own build that you are more comfortable with. After all, it's a game you're supposed to have fun, so do what you enjoy and run what you enjoy. And last thing, just a quick reminder that we have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and things that interest us, and Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. Alright, so before we talk about the builds, we do need to talk about what Lance builds need. There are certain core skills you need to have in a Lance build compared to just stacking as much damage as possible. So first off, from talking to several Lance mains and speedrunners, the general consensus is that Guard 3 is now the minimum needed. There are apparently some matchups you can get away with Guard 1 if you know how to use Guard dashes appropriately, but it's still better just to run Guard 3 because you barely lose any damage skills to run it. Guard 5 is certainly comfier and we will have a Guard 5 build in this video, but it's not really mandatory. So far, the only Guard 5 mandatory monster I know of is Rajang. At least at the time of making this video, it is entirely possible that Guard 5 is necessary for certain monsters that will be released later in DLC. The other is Offensive Guard 3. Offensive Guard 3 gives you an increase of 15% to your base true raw anytime you perfect block an attack. This is half of what you would get from an active evasion mantle in base game, which is a lot of damage. This lasts for a total of 12 seconds. And in order to activate it, the perfect block essentially means you have to block right before the attack hits you. Now, out of every single weapon in the game, Lance has the easiest time activating offensive guard. This is for three different reasons. For one thing, you have a lot of different blocking mechanics that can all activate offensive guard. You can do a neutral block, you can do a guard dash, you can do a counter thrust, all of these can trigger offensive guard when timed right. Secondly, you have extremely low animation commitments on Lance. This means it's very unlikely you'll be locked in an attack animation and be able to get hit unless you get greedy. This is what can make it more difficult to actually keep offensive guard up on charge blade because you have a lot of big animation commitments that you cannot guard point until the end of. And thirdly, you can animation cancel into any of these different blocking mechanics while you're mid-combo which allows you to override recovery frames. This is something it has over something like Gun Lance, where you cannot block until all of your recovery frames are finished with your attack, which makes it very difficult to block reactively with Gun Lance and to also trigger offensive guard that way. Once you're used to the timing window in which you have to block to trigger offensive guard, you can keep around 80% or more uptime with it. This is entirely matchup dependent. Some more aggressive matchups you can easily keep 100% uptime and some will give you a lot less because because they spend so much time Kel being around. Now, guard up is less necessary outside of some specific matchups. One of the things they added in Iceborne is that Lance can now get a natural guard up if you stay in power guard for long enough. Most of the unblockable attacks in the game have a pretty long wind up, long enough for you to get this natural guard up power guard out. The final core is that Lance is one of the only weapons in the game that has to have health augments. On other weapon classes, health augment is really only only mandatory with peak performance sets and is otherwise used mostly for comfiness. But Lance is the only weapon in the game that 99.9% .9 of the time you're blocking things not dodging things, which means you're taking chip damage. Even with Guard 5, there are master rank monsters that will deal quite a bit of chip damage through your block. 
And if you like to spam Power Guard a lot, then Power Guard takes even more chip damage than regular blocks. Now the easiest way for a Lance user to card is having to sheath when low on health to heal yourself. You have the slowest sheath speed in the game, and if you're already in one shot range from not having healed up your chip damage, you're a very easy target for the monster to kill. So in order to prevent this, you should be running health augment in order to constantly heal up all of the chip damage you take. Now these different core skills do end up making what are the meta raw options look different than it does on other raw weapons. So first up, let's cover the build that our friend Butts here, a Lance speedrunner, is using for this Tigrex run, which is the speedrunner Rajang Lance set. This is the highest damage possible raw Lance set. And this is also the only case that I know of where for a melee weapon, a Rajang weapon is the highest damage raw option. Also a quick note, all of the EFR in our build cards will have Offensive Guard active. So this set does get 824.21 EFR. It also gets 13.8 Effective Thunder, which translates to about 1 to 4 Thunder damage depending on hit zone values. This does allow it to beat what was originally the best raw lance, the Acidic Lavinus. Now the Acidic Lavinus does hit 834.83 EFR. However, depending on the hit zone value of the monster as well as the particular defense mod in the quest, this is anywhere from a 1 to a 0 damage increase over the Rajang Lance. Lance does not have very high motion values, so a 10 EFR difference doesn't always round up to an extra point of damage. Now because the Rajang Lance also has thunder damage, this is always going to be equaling or less than the damage of the Rajang Lance per poke unless the monster is immune to thunder damage. And even then, the big issue with the Acidic Lavinous Lance versus the Rajang Lance is that it only has 10 units of purple. Lance next to maybe IG is the most sharpness hungry weapon in the game. Yes, even compared to dual blades. Dual blades may hit faster, but it has a natural razor sharp that makes it only consume sharpness once every three hits. In fact, in vanilla base Monster Hunter Wall, before any DLC came out, the only two weapons that ran Master's Touch sets before Behemoth came out were IG and Lance. And keep in mind that base vanilla Monster Hunter World Master's Touch sets with the Teostra Beta armor had about 10% less damage. But they had to run Master's Touch because Protective Polish was not enough sharpness mitigation for them. Even speedrunners struggle to keep this 10 units of purple active on the Acidic Glavinus. This is why with the Rajang set, it has 20 units of white sharpness, twice the amount of effective sharpness, which is a much more reasonable amount for Lance to run. So why do I call this a speedrunner set though? I mean, we do have our normal high damage sets, but we don't always call them speedrunner sets. That's because the Rajang Lance does not function unless you use a high rank helmet, the Kaiser Gama helmet. Without the Kaiser Gama helmet, you cannot fit crit i7, agitator 5, and attack boost 4. And the moment you drop a single one of any of these skills, you stop being able to run 100% affinity, meaning you can no longer maintain your white sharpness the whole hunt. Now this does end up being about 11 to 12% more damage taken per hit, so up to you whether that's worth it, but this set does not function without using a high rank piece of armor. Which also means because this cannot lose any skills, you also can't really use this in multiplayer because you cannot afford to give anything up for flinch free. So if we want to keep all of our defense and we want to add extra skills in here or swap things out, what do we run instead? Well, for Lance, the answer is pretty much universally the Runa Nogagante Lance. It gets everything we possibly want out of a Lance. It's super comfy sharpiness because we have 110 natural units of white sharpness and also 102% affinity with Master's Touch. Because it's not super dependent on all of its skills to function properly, we can just drop the double attack boost deco here if we want to run flinch free. If you want to add in some health boost or things like that, just drop some of the attack decos or some of the combo decos for vitality combos. And if you switch out an attack boost deco for a crit eye, you can change out the charm and still hit 100% affinity no problem. And it still gets very high EFR at 790.94. And with 20.7 effective dragon, this is about 2 to 6 or so damage per poke, just depending on dragon hits and values. And the Elder Seal is pretty neat too. Now you may be wondering, if it has 110 natural units of white sharpness, why do we even bother running Master's Touch? Can't we just run Razor Sharp instead? Well, for one thing, if you play extremely aggressively with Lance, which is generally how Lance plays, 220 units until you hit blue is not really enough before a monster transitions. 
One of Lance's distinct strengths is its ability to constantly keep damage pressure up on a monster due to its blocking mechanics, which burns a lot of damage really fast. And the other issue is you literally don't get anything out of running Razor Sharp instead. In fact, you lose all the side bonus skills like Heat Guard and Latent Power and end up with the exact same skill loadout for damage skills. That being said, if you want to run a different set bonus than Master's Touch, a Runa no Gigante Lance with a Razor Sharp Charm is definitely going to be the best option for that. The other competitive raw option is going to be the Shara Lance. This has 792.02 EFR, which is a 1.08 increase over the Runa no Gigante. This almost always rounds to the same damage per poke. And because the Runa Gigante Lance has dragon damage, this will pretty much always lose unless the monster is immune to dragon. And instead of 110 units of white sharpness, it has 30 units of purple. However, purple has its uses. Monsters like the Metal Wraths, as well as Young Garuga, will make you bounce on purple, so if you don't have a Mind's Eye Deco to slot into the Runa no Gigante build, you might want to run this instead. You also can't make the Runa Lance until MR100, so this is a good option until then. Also, we are talking about a 0-6 damage difference per poke, and this Lance does look dope. Now, with the previous Runa no Gigante Lance set, you can pretty much just sub out stuff to fit your needs. But if you do want to maximize your damage while keeping Guard 5 and Guard up in the set, this is what the set looks like. You do have to drop your Agitator Charm for an Iron Side Charm, but this does let you have the flexibility in your decos to fit in a Shield Deco without sacrificing Crit Boost or Weakness Exploit or anything important. And again, if you want to run Flinch Free on this set, simply get rid of the Challenger Plus Deco in here and change an Attack Deco to a Crit Eye Deco to make sure you're still hitting 100% affinity. Alright, that is every single meta raw build for Lance. However, we are not nearly done with Lance yet because we still have to cover elemental as well as status builds. Given the right conditions, those are capable of beating the raw builds we have put out today. At least by a few percents worth of damage given the right hits and value ratios, etc. As I mentioned earlier, the Iceborne meta is no longer that cut and dry. There are a lot more viable optimal weapons now simply due to how close so many of these weapons come in damage output. And we haven't even talked about elemental and status builds yet. Alright, thank you so much for checking out the video. If you have any friends who enjoy poking monsters to death, then be sure to share the video with them. And if you enjoy the video yourself, be sure to let us know by liking the video and leaving a comment below, it really does help. And thank you as always to Honey over at HoneyHunterWorld.com who created and maintains the tool that we use to make all of these sets and build cards with. And a huge thank you to our friend Butts, who is the speedrunner you see in the background footage for this video. Not only did he provide the background footage, but he also chatted with me a lot about different things about Lance and Iceborne so that I could make sure the information in this video was accurate. He is a phenomenal Lance speedrunner, be sure to go check out his channel, link in the top right and the description. And of course, if you'd like to come chat about Lance or just come hang out in general, be sure to check out our Discord server, The Mathlos Nest. Just please keep all Iceborne related talk to our Iceborne specific channel so that our PC players can avoid spoilers. Don't forget we do have our Twitter where we post updates about videos and things that interest us, and Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. And of course none of this would be possible without the generosity of our patrons. And especially big thank you to our new patrons Corsac Gamer and Guillaume Mercier. It really does mean the world to us know that you are willing to support us directly, even though our content does take longer to produce than a lot of other YouTube content out there. So thank you so much again. And just a reminder, all of our patrons, regardless of pledge amount, are able to vote on the next meta video. We'll be working on whichever one wins after we finish up the launch series. Currently, Dual Blades is winning with Hunting Horn right behind. Okay, that is everything I have for you on this one. As I mentioned, this Lance meta series is going to be a series because, well, there are still the elemental and status builds to cover. So if you'd like to see those as soon as they go live, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, and that way YouTube will let you know as soon as those videos come out. Happy hunting, hunters. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.